Oh, here comes a sick one. Welcome to The Hold Down, the show that counts down the big moments that matter in surfing. I'm your host, Ronnie Blakey, WSL commentator, and this is my co-host, a man that's been in the surf industry for 25 years and has never put sunscreen on his big red nose. <laughs> that's Vaughn Blakey. Just got the call up from Santa to guide his sleigh this Christmas, so who's laughing now, Ron? <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, another special show, but before we dive into it, we want to say a big thanks to the crew at Surf World Gold Coast for hosting us in their beautiful museum. I love this joint. It smells like an old dirty wedding, but it's so good. There's so much history in here. There's a lot of dirty weddies in here, and you there know is. what people like to do in their wetsuits for. <laughs> That's right. Stay warm in them. OK, well, let's get into it. This is another big show dedicated to celebrating magic moments in the sport, and today we're celebrating the parallel careers of two surfing prodigies. Ron and Vaughan? It's not us. Damn it! I do like the hoodie. Thanks, mate. But uh, we're celebrating two of the best. Owen Wright and his baby sister, Tyler. The right stuff, Ron. They've got it in spades. And these two between them have won 17 CT events, won over $2 million in prize money, and they've reset the bar many, many times in all sorts of conditions, in all sorts of events. This is gonna be a great hit. It's gonna be awesome. Let's get stuck right into it. Here's number five on our list of magic moments in the life of two of surfing's great siblings. Number five on our list belongs to Tyler Wright. We've seen what she can do in a championship to a jersey, but away from competition, she's also collecting plenty of highlights. Tyler grew up with hard charging brothers in an area on the Australian coastline that is famous for thick, meaty slabs. So it was always going to happen that one day she was going to be out there and the brothers would be going, don't you pull back, don't you pull back, you better go Tyler, you better go. And mate, these are the waves that showcase just how much that attitude benefited her surfing. Let's have a look at this unbelievable barrel first up uh, from somewhere on the south coast. We're not gonna give the spot away, but Tyler, she just executes the drop so perfectly, tucks up into the section. The wave is just roping off across the sandbar and she gets absolutely just swallowed by the thing. Mate, this is during one of those big, meaty east coast lows. Now these swells, they just push down out of the atmosphere and pumping waves just light up the entire east coast of Australia. And this wave, to me, really showcases just how skillful Tyler is at tube riding because everything about it is critical, everything is late, and the way that she just rides through this big breather just reeks of going for it. And I love seeing that attitude, especially in heavy water. One of the major talking points, especially uh, regarding surfers on the championship tour, women in particular, is just how quickly they're evolving, especially in the, the tube riding department. And, and Tyler Wright, she's demonstrated with that right-hander that she is at the top end. You're absolutely bang on, Ron. And we're seeing a lot of movement, frontside tube riding, but where I think the big evolutionary leaps are happening is women surfing backside tube riding. And you'll see no better example of this than Tyler Wright's no hands backside drainer on the inside section of Cloud Break 2016. Mind blown. 
unbelievable. And that was the year that she went on to get her maiden world title. And I think, you know, sometimes people talk about the best surfers in the world aren't necessarily on tour. Well, that year, Tyler, she had a dominant season, five championship tour wins. She also probably free surfed the best two waves by a female that year. Hallelujah, Tyler. 100%. This backside tube, I loved it so much, I put it straight on the cover of Surfing World magazine. No questions asked. One of the best tubes we saw of the year. Deep slotted, getting spat from the deepest barrels all year long. Tyler Wright, you're on fire. Stay with us, because after the break, we're going to have a look at one of the greatest comebacks in the sports history here on The Hold Down. Welcome back to The Hold Down. Ronnie here with Vaughn today. We're talking about the amazing careers of surfing siblings, Owen and Tyler Wright. But Vaughn, they're not the first siblings to, to find success in the in the game. Oh, Rattle off a couple more for me. Siblings have been all over surfing like rats up a drain pipe. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many great ones. I mean, straight off the top of my head, the Irons brothers, absolutely famous. Uh, the Lopez brothers, they were there. We've got the Ho brothers. We've got lots and lots of brothers but not a lot of brother and sister combos. So that's why I'm loving today's end. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun today. We discussed Tyler, her tube riding prowess in our first segment, but right now we're gonna reveal our number four. Four! Number four on our list is, I think, one of the great comebacks in surfing, in sport in general. Owen Wright getting the job done after an injury which could have ended his career and just ended his chances of surfing ever again. That's what makes this win at the Quicksilver Pro so remarkable. Because for a while there, the extent of his injuries were not known. He took a heavy beating at Pipeline, he came in, he had a lie down. Next thing you know, ambulances called to the Pipeline house. He's carted off. No one knew what was going on. It ended up being quite a severe brain injury. Not a lot's known about brain injuries, Ron. But he had to learn to walk, learn to talk. He had a baby in the same year. Next thing, it's 12 months later, he hasn't pulled on a comp rashy, and he's got to try and get back into a competitive mindset and back onto the tour. I mean, what are the odds of him actually coming out and winning that event? Next to zero. And he's really only been back on his feet, on his shortboard for a couple of months before the first event of the season kicked off in 2017. Mate, no one saw this victory coming. Even Owen just was getting in the uh, event to basically just have a warm up and see how he felt. That's right, uh, I think he said himself, he wasn't hoping for too much. He just wanted to pull the rashi on, feel the vibes of the CT energy all around him again. And next thing he's just making heat after heat after heat after heat. He turns around and whose smile is staring at him from the other side of the draw? His best buddy, Matt Wilco. And uh, by that stage, the entire world was just completely absorbed watching this final play out. And, you know, people love Wilco, but I don't think there was a single soul. Not even Wilco's dad was going for him in that final run. It was all over. Everyone wanted an Owen victory. And Wilco's been supporting me the whole way through that injury, and he's been with me every step of the way, and we're both here in a the final. There were two things, two moments that I just loved out of this win, though. And the first one was that the year before, Owen had actually made an appearance at Snapper Rocks to hug Tyler Wright. And I don't know if you remember that, she won the event and he came up and he was there for her and it was just tears everywhere. This time around, Tyler was on hand to give him the big hug, which was just a beautiful full, full circle moment. The other moment is a Corey Wilson photograph that's taken from just behind the stage, looking out over the crowd. And it's this intimate moment between Keita Alexander and Owen Wright and their little bubby and mate, they're just all together and you can just feel the love in that moment about to just <laughs> explode. <laughs> I don't know, Ron. You know, when you see stuff like that, surfing goes to another place. It's not just about the win. It's not just about being great at it. It takes you to a place where miracles can happen. Oh, I just think they both to never believe that he could get back there so soon because Keita was the, the rock for Owen through that whole, mm. that whole year, his whole recovery. She was bedside in Hawaii with him when he was you know, struggling to, to get just to his feet. Amazing performance, I'm just so, so stoked.
yes, a magic moment in the life of Owen Wright, but there is plenty more to come. But up next, another one for Tyler Wright. This is number three. Yes, Tyler Wright, we mentioned her free surfing performances earlier on Vaughan, but her title campaign in 2016 is the stuff of legend. That's right, Ron. It's really hard to win the world title in France. In fact, the last time it happened was 1989. Martin Potter got away to such a blinding lead that he had the world title trophy in his suitcase by France. He sent the entire tour into a giant party meltdown because there was no chance anyone could win. That was huge. Still the largest winning margin of any time. But put this next to Tyler's year, Ron. Out of the 10 events on tour, by the time she got to France, which was actually the second last event that year, she already had four wins in the bag. I mean, that is unheard of. She ended up getting the world title in France, sealing it with another victory in Maui. That means she won 50% of the events on tour and did no worse than quarters for all the rest, barring one little hiccup, Bethany Hamilton in Fiji. And the celebration was made even sweeter by the fact this is the year that her older brother Owen is basically sitting on the sidelines with a brain injury. So he's sitting at home, she's super inspired, wanting to, to really dedicate this win to her, her big brother. And she got it done so early. She was able to cruise through the, the last few events of the season. I think her surfing improved because she'd freed herself up. And uh, yeah, it was a very special year for the Wright family. Absolutely dominant performance. And let's not understate the effect of having Glenn Micro Hall in her corner as well. What secrets do you keep, Micro? What secrets? You gotta get out there, right? Yeah. Get out there and rip some heads off. Okay. <laughs> crafty little Irishman. Well, stay with us, because after the break, we're gonna get to number two on our list of magic moments for the Wright family. Welcome back to The Hold Down. Today, we're looking at the incredible achievements of the Wright family, in particular, Owen and his little sister, Tyler. We just spoke about her first world title. Let's have a look at her second. This is our number two. two. Title number two. I mean, back-to-back -back world titles, almost no one can do that. On the women's side of things, maybe a little bit more successful. We've seen Lisa Anderson, Wendy Botha, Steph Gilmore, obviously, Lane Beachley. It has happened a few times, but still, to put 24 months of campaign together is very difficult, especially when you get that monkey off your back with the first one. Tyler Wright, before her world title year, Ron, had actually really struggled to make a run at the crown. She'd finished runner-up a couple of times, but it just couldn't get over the line. And so when she had the relief of winning that world title, it was gonna be a big mission for her to back that up. Well, in my view, her second world title is even more impressive in some ways because it's grittier. She had to fight tooth and nail. She had the competitors coming at her. A new breed too, Courtney Conlog, Lakey Peterson, all these girls were finding their straps. But in the end, she got through it and she got through it with an injury. Yeah, I think the most remarkable thing, even about the, the first world title, is the fact that Tyler is having to overcome the two greatest surfers, female surfers of all time. Mm. Carissa Moore and Stephanie Gilmore. Uh, we know that Steph's the most winning surfer now of all time. Carissa Moore, she might have to get a couple more world titles to get herself in, into to Lane and, and Steph's sort of realm. But performance-wise, they're the two greatest surfers of all time, without question. It's true, isn't it? Sometimes you see a little asterisk when a, a really great surfer is not on tour and there are world titles won. It doesn't matter so much to me, but it is a question that gets asked. So when you're winning world titles against two of the greats, the modern living greats, you know that you're having to go to an entirely different level. Tyler did that. She did it once, she did it twice. Sometimes with competitive surfers, we find ourselves you know, after a period of time, just focusing on the numbers. How many wins have they had? How many world titles did they get? And, and sort of one thing that you, you tend to start to overlook is the actual surfing. Mm. And Tyler is really unique when you compare her to her rivals. No, that's a really good point, Ron. And Tyler Wright's surfing is power-based. She loves coming off the bottom. She loves attacking the lip. She loves big, open-faced, high-speed calves that really bury the rail. She loves to shoot the spray into the air. That's her game. And she backs that with a mental toughness 
and a gritty determination to win. And so it basically creates this package that is a very intimidating you know, force to reckon with, even for the Carissas and the Stephs. They know they've got a fight on their hands when they step into the ring with Tyler. And that's why uh, an injury and having a dodgy hinge going into the last three events is a huge, huge blow to her campaign. But here's the thing, champions find a way to win. I mean, you guys talk about it on the Wuzzle broadcast all the time, Ronnie, and especially when their rivals show a moment's weakness, that's when they bounce <laughs> like a tiger. Anyway, Tyler Wright ended up getting there, did enough. Two world titles back to back, legendary status confirmed. Yeah, she's had some time off from competition herself. We wish her all the best. We want that recovery. We want her back on tour, chasing that third crown. Good on you, Tyler. Stick around because after the break, we're going to expose number one on our list of amazing moments for the Wright family. Welcome back to the hold down. We've reached that point in time, Vaughan, where it's time to expose number one on our list. Special moments. The life and times of Tyler and Owen Wright, there's been plenty to celebrate. There has been, but this is really special. This is really, really special. How special? Really, really, really special. Let's get into it. One. Well, for number one, we have chosen the best moment in recent sporting history. It is the big O, Owen Wright, gaffing up and getting right in the zone, right there in the belly of Chopes. Go, Owen, you mad dog. And you know what made it great? is who he was surfing against. Gabriel Medina is in the zone, in the winning zone. And at Chopo, he's been near unbeatable. And Owen wasn't gonna let that win slip through his fingers. He was behind the eight ball in a big way. He played the start of the final perfectly, got himself tactically in a great position, but was chasing big numbers. Medina was starting to drop the scores, Vaughn, and uh, it just looked like for all the money in the world, Owen was you know, kissing goodbye to that Chiopu title. Mm, well, we did talk about Gabriel Medina in another episode, as how much he loves to sort of build his year. Slow start, that's what we expect for him, but as soon as he gets a win, he just starts coming at you harder and harder. He had the win in J-Bay, he went to Chopes, he knew he had to make up some ground on the title front runners. Next thing you know, he's in the final. In his mind, he's going, nothing is gonna stop me, but he didn't count on the gaff. He didn't count on winter coming. He didn't count on the mighty scullet with the arms like a giant gannet flying through perfect tens and absolutely dominating the comp. It was unbelievable. And Ron, here's the thing, mate. If the comeback started at Snapper, well, it just about wrapped up at Chopes because we knew that Owen was back in the frame for world title contention. We knew he could win CTs, but this was the big question, wasn't it? Heavy water. Could he do what he'd done at Cloudbreak back in these sorts of waves at Chopu this year? He proved he could. You could tell how emotional he was when he got into the, uh, the channel, got on the boat and everyone was celebrating. It was a big deal. Mate, I teared up out there when that hooter went, eh? <laughs> He's working hard and stoked to win. Put his head in his hands and just broke down at the end of that final. Well, I think this is the question that he probably had in the back of his brain going, what's standing between me and a world title right now? It's probably just this one last step in my recuperation. It's can I do what I used to do with the same confidence in that sort of surf? And here's the thing, let's all hail the mighty gaff. That's exactly what I was gonna say. That's all it took. He, he was looking just for that uh, extra confidence to throw himself under the ledge and get into some of the biggest barrels of the event. And he did it, he, he found it. He found that secret weapon. Oh man, Tyler and Owen Wright, how many more goose bumps can you give us? I don't know if I can stand it anymore, Ron, but they, here's the thing, they're both so young. They've both got so much more to give. I can't wait to see just how these careers play out 
for the rest of their pro surfing lives. Mate, they're an inspiration, those two, uh, showing us how to support each other, how to love. I've learned a lot. Love you, dog. Oh. Need a shower. Uh, but anyway, thanks for joining us for another big episode of The Hold Down. Make sure you tune in next week as we dive into more big moments in the sport of surfing.